Seven years ago, this SSD retailed for around $2,000. That means that this SSD was more expensive than any graphics card pretty much for gaming currently on the market, minus the RTX Titan. But for the most part, this was an SSD that was aimed at the server market. Now today we're going to take a look at it seven years later and give it a pretty solid review. What it's, how it, well does it actually still hold up in today's market? And this one is actually quite an interesting one because this was one of Intel's very first SSDs that they ever made. They decided that they were going to start getting into the SSD market and now we look at things like Optane and stuff that are going on. We really have come a long way. And you take a look at this and it makes you really wonder uh, what was it like seven years when Intel put out its first uh, PCIe SSD. So this is actually quite an interesting one. So a lot of the background story behind this is this was actually a combination of partnership with Intel and another company to do the board uh, design. So pretty much the controller, the thing that allows you, the, I guess it's kind of like a processor in the sense of a computer. And these are layman's terms, so please don't get too offended if you know really what's going on. Um, but mostly it's you have a bunch of individual uh, chips that store the information with your storage, I guess. And then you have the, um, the, I guess the processor that controls and encodes stuff in and out through those different chips uh, to the computer, the rest of the computer, I guess. So a couple weird oddities about this one. First off, uh, it doesn't allow bootable, uh, you can't boot from this drive. So that means you can't have Windows or um, Linux or any operating system on there because you really just can't access it, uh, especially to boot. So this SSD more serves as fast storage for games and things like that rather than a technical um, piece of equipment that you would be using to boot from, it is not a bootable SSD. Another quick oddity about this one is the fact that in this, it only doesn't, it doesn't allow for um, each of the partitions, I guess not really partitions, but sections of this um, drive itself are actually separate drives. They're not, um, this isn't one solid drive, it reads as two separate drives um, that you have to do use a RAID configuration for and it doesn't even come with a built-in RAID controller You have to use a software configured RAID controller to get these to work together So oddly this is a 400 gig SSD, but it only uh, has two separate 200 to 188 gigabyte um, Sections that you have to RAID together in order to get full usage out of this so that really comes across as quite an oddity. This was originally designed for servers. That was the main purpose of this. It was supposed to be used as a quick way to, uh, for high uh, computations that needed really quick access to hard drives uh, or, or storage. This was supposed to be designed for that. And these came in, I believe, a 200 gigabyte, a 400 gigabyte, and 800 gigabyte. The, 200, or the 400 gigabyte retailed for $2,000. I think the 800 did like around 4,000. And the um, original, I think the, 200 maybe around a thousand uh, but this for the most part was quite a powerful SSD but it had some quirks so let's see really how well it holds up against some of the more modern day SSDs so I've actually gotten my hands uh, I got my hands on this but I'm, I'm going to be testing with my uh, bootable drive so back I don't know a while ago one of my hard drive or my SSDs gave out and so I decided that I was going to purchase a really, really fast bootable drive. So I purchased one of the most newest Western Digital M.2 drives to compare to um, using my main system. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to really put up against a couple SSDs. I've got a couple. Uh, I've even got one that I'm writing to for, from this camera right now. Um, and we're going to really put it up against the work. So we're going to really see how well this performs. And honestly, here's some of the really big concerns that I have about where it might actually bottleneck. So first off, this is rather old technology. And while, yes, seven years ago, even having an SSD would have been amazing, this was definitely the best of the best of that time. Uh, this was probably uh, maybe about a year ahead of its time, really. It was the SSDs getting to especially around 400 gigabytes was quite impressive. And so the storage and stuff and the controllers and stuff are probably built quite well, but we are stuck on PCIe Gen 2, not 3. So really, we may have decent controllers, we may have decent modules, but we probably will be bottlenecking on the interface. And sadly, um, that will probably hinder the results. Had this been made in PCIe Gen 3, uh, it probably would have lasted a little bit longer. We may have had, uh, not really lasted longer, but really may have been a little bit more modern or stayed modern a little bit longer. 
So this is quite an odd piece of technology from its time, but let's put it up against the works. Let's see what happens when I throw it in the system and we take a look at the SSD that cost $2,000 seven years ago. So I'd like to start with a quick teardown of this SSD. So since this is a server grade uh, SSD, it's of course it's a small form factor, so they ended up making multiple layers of PCB and kind of stacking it together, uh, which I think is kind of a unique design, unique way of doing things. But I figured for today's video, let's also tear it down and take a quick look at just the individual components themselves uh, up close and see exactly what was so special about this and um, really what's inside. So the first thing that I notice is that um, after a quick glance underneath here, you can actually make out um, the, uh, I guess what you would call the chipset. Uh, part of my naming, I'm a little tired and I don't particularly, uh, I'm an expert with storage, SSDs, etc. Uh, but basically I think the controller, that's the right word, controller um, has p not really passive, I guess it has an extra heat sink on it. And so if you think about the time, this was back when SSDs were just getting started out. So a lot of the processors and stuff that were being used uh, for the processing of encoding back to the data uh, and then sending it back off to the computer, the processor and stuff, um, those were really starting to be taken from CPU processors. So a lot of the stuff that, uh, a lot of stuff was actually ended up being kind of moved and copied from pre-existing things so a lot of these components at the time ended up being uh, kind of taken from other parts of similar uh, devices. Like some of these actually came up from processors. Uh, there was a lot of things that ended up being taken from elsewhere. So here it is, it's broken down into two separate parts. We've got more of the data side, uh, which I believe these are all the data modules. Um, each one of these chips, I think we have uh, one, two, three, we have, we have a good bit of them. So 30 data, data modules available that I can see. Um, and that's just kind of more of a data part of the chip. Um, and then over here, we've got more of the uh, in and outs. We've got the uh, definitely two separate modules. So I think noticing a lot of little experience past in the past testing this card, there are two separate SSDs that kind of show up in um, when you boot into Windows. The first one, um, I, have a fi I have a strong feeling that each one of these controllers controls a separate one of the SSDs. So a couple of things to pay close attention to is there is a, I guess you would call a processor or a controller uh, that allows encoding and stuff. It's got two little modules of, looks like RAM, uh, that are closely attached to the um, controller. And this controller, I would assume, is kind of part of, that's a little system right there. So we've also got another one right here, and then we've got some type of device that looks like it's underneath a um, heatsink, which I would say, if I were to really take a strong guess, um, I would say some of this is probably due to just being, uh, I'm assuming these two are dedicated to their separate individual SSDs, and this has probably something to do with input and output so that it's shared, and that's also why it's cooled with a much beefier heatsink. I also notice there's a stray data module over here, and then we've got a lot of extra room on the PCB over here that really didn't look like it got used. Uh, it looks like it was kind of designed to maybe hold uh, another couple more processors or uh, controllers. So I think this would have been the same board they would have used for the 800 gigabyte model, but rather than, um, I think maybe, eight, probably for around every 200 gigabytes you would get one of these controllers to help individually address uh, the modules on that. So I would figure the 800 gigabyte, since this is a 400 gigabyte model, if you had an additional two, you'd probably, uh, an additional 400 gigabytes, you'd probably have another two over there. No idea what this little thing on the top is, but there are no components on the back there as well. It's quite smooth. Um, so that would be that. Also on the back, I noticed a couple other things. Where we had those modules on the front, we also have an individual pair on the back. So it looks like we have four modules per controller. Um, we've also got some additional, uh, I would say, memory. It looks like memory. Um, probably some redundancy there. And I do notice a little bit weird differences in components on the back, but for the most part, we've got the interface that we connect to. Um, so I'm assuming this lovely little interface right here um, is probably to connect to the other memory side cards. So I am assuming that this would be what you consider the top card. This is 200, almost 400 gigabytes worth of storage here. And I figure that for the 800 gigabyte model, they might have another bit sandwiched in between. The interface for this is quite interesting. It's got a lot of pins and it's actually a, by today's standards, a pretty large piece of connector. 
And obviously, if you were to lay this out, it would probably be about the size of two PCIe Gen 3 or PCIe slots um, X16. And so it would definitely be a rather um, big uh, connector if you were to lay it out that way. So that is the individual uh, controller part of this SSD. And then we've got, of course, the SSD part of the SSD um, or the storage part. And uh, let's combine these back together. Let's throw it in the system and see what testing we can get out of it. Okay, so welcome back. I've gone through and I've tested my computer, which is actually these two monitors down here. And I've got this one hooked up over there. Um, this one is running the um, SSD, the PCIe SD. And um, so a couple things to notice. First off, uh, the SSD itself didn't have both of its 200 gigabyte modules adding up to a total of 400 gigabyte working. It only had one. In a sense, well, played for one. Uh, yeah, I think that I'm a little disappointed there, but it looks like only one of them was working. So I've tested that one 200 gigabyte model or module, and uh, I've gotten about half a gigabyte right and about 400 megabytes, uh, or sorry, half a gigabyte read and ha about 400 megabytes uh, right. <coughs> so definitely still an SSD level of performance, uh, but this is definitely running hot. It's, it's quite actually hot. Um, it's also really power intensive, so SSDs usually don't need a lot of power. This one does, uh, so it's not really efficient. Um, and then over here, we've got my uh, Western Digital 500 gigabyte Black, which is probably one of the fastest drives out there for NVMe, or NVMe um, and M.2 uh, form factor. So this definitely is one of the more faster, uh, faster modern things. So this is probably one of the most modern um, PCIe SSDs from 2000 or seven years ago. And then this one was most likely um, one of the fastest uh, currently-ish. I'd say there's definitely faster and there's definitely, uh, you know, Intel's Optane and stuff that is going to be definitely faster than this. But this is really a consumer grade example of what is going on currently. And this one's going too. Um, but as you can see, it is clearly still holding its ground in 2019. But you can obviously see that the technology has improved a good bit. And this is almost, what, like six, seven times faster than the, the, the newest stuff that I have for consumers. So this was definitely a high-end uh, server grade, and now we're talking about consumers. So that's not really an accurate example, but hope you guys will enjoy today's video, just seeing how well it holds up. So is it worth it to go out and buy yourself an Intel uh, PC uh, SSD? Probably not, because for the price, I think this goes around 150 bucks, uh, and this one didn't even work, half of it. So, yeah, that's questionable there. Um, but for about 150 bucks uh, to get about 400 gigabytes, if you're lucky, worth of storage, or about 100 bucks to get 500 gigabytes of storage and get like seven times faster. So I'm sure if you went, and I, that was back when I bought it, so probably it's even cheaper. Maybe you can get a terabyte. So you can see, big difference here, very big difference. And I would definitely say go with the modern stuff because this has kind of reached the point where it's just not really, uh, it became obsolete. So thank you guys very much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up. As always, check out the channel for other cool, tech-related news, reviews, builds, etc. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.